My name is Daniel Moore. And today, um, just like every class, please modify techniques and movements to work for you. Make sure that you follow that feel good principle, right? So these movements should feel pretty good, if not very good. Um, some of them might be challenging, but um, you can either rev it up or rev it down to make it more productive for you. We'll start the way we normally do. We're going to start on our mats. Just laying on our back. It's a good position to get in. Um, especially because we, we live in a culture that's always go, 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 go. So it's really important to let go and to um, let the body kind of do what it does best, which is take us back into a place of homeostasis. Okay, let's lay on our backs and get started. All right, so once you get onto your backside, feel free to just close your eyes. You don't really need to see anything at this particular moment, but if you want to, you can of course look at your screen. But all we're gonna do is we're just gonna place our hands on our abdomen and we're just gonna start to massage by either stroking with the weight of our hand or by pressing our fingers around all the different soft parts of the abdomen. You know, perhaps you have a, um, an old surgery, abdominal surgery that you've had, and, or maybe a, a C-section or, um, you know, any number of things. Uh, perhaps you have a history of, of, of some bowel dynamics. Um, so what we're doing is we're just kind of tuning in and making sure that everything in this abdominal area is nice and calm and relaxed and, and feeling as good as it possibly can. Remember that our immune system that's here in the abdomen, 70% of it anyway, so our body's ability to deal with inflammation, to deal with viruses, anything that our body doesn't want inside, our body's ability to deal with those things lives in your abdominal area. So let's just take some time to relax and to press into the abdominal area and make sure everything feels nice and comfortable. Now, if any part doesn't feel comfortable, spend a little bit more time and adjust your pressure, adjust the positioning and the angle of pressure that you're using with your fingers or your hand or whatever tool you're using to the side. Nice and easy, nice and relaxed. And then from here, let's go ahead and just reach our arms above our head. Now, when you do that, I want to see if you can keep the ribs down in front. Because when I lift my arms, the tendency, because of the pectoralis minor specifically, the tendency is for the rib cage to lift up. And what we want to do is we want to try to hold those ribs down in front so we get a nice stretch through the front of the chest. And then you can take your hand or your palm into the armpit and massage to one side at a time. This gentle massaging into the armpit. This is really important, especially for you ladies, perhaps um, wearing really tight bras um, or whatever it might be, or even clothing that might restrict that flow. And you just want to massage into the lymph nodes, into the armpit. So I can actually take my fingers and grab on the pectoralis major muscle right in the front of the chest and just kind of press into that and compress into that and switch sides. Just get a nice gentle, um, sorry, um, compression into the armpit. Nice and easy. And then from here, let's take a full palm into the left side of the neck. And we're going to stroke with the weight of our hand through the neck, down through the sternum, and end up in the abdomen and we'll switch sides. You're taking the full palm, side of the neck, stroke through, through the sternum, and down into the abdomen. 
And this is really productive for um, situations such as a hiatal um, hernia. And that's where the stomach is, is making its way up in, if up in and through the esophageal sphincter, which is like the, the place where your esophagus leads to your stomach through the diaphragm. So we're just using the weight of our hands to stroke to the side all the way through and into the abdomen, nice and easy. And then let's just go ahead and relax for a minute. Take a full breath with the arms down by the side. Let go of any tension. Just move your body, adjust your body position to just get nice and comfortable. Let any unnecessary tension sink into the mat below you. All right, so our first movement, we're gonna do some rolling this morning. The emphasis is to reach through the connective tissue. So we're gonna start our rolling with our arms above our head. And from this position, we're going to reach one arm up towards the ceiling. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna reach through each one of the fingers. And I want you to pay attention to the sensations that you feel while you reach. And then from here, we're gonna reach that arm across the body and only reach as far as you like or as far as what's comfortable. And then slowly return onto your back and then switch sides. So again, you're bringing your attention into each one of your fingers and you're reaching through the connective tissue and stretching through the connective tissue, changing the vector and the angle of stretch by emphasizing the reach through each one of those fingers. Okay, return to your backside, nice and slow and controlled. See if you can add some breath work into this. So breathe in, reach and stretch. Return to your backside. Now remember guys, especially when we get into positions where we rotate through the spine, we wanna make sure that we're relaxing into those positions. And the way that you relax while you're moving is by taking a nice, gentle, expansive, diaphragmatic breath. Okay, so every movement we do today, we should be breathing, but especially when we get into those positions where we might, might feel a little bit like, huh? or we're not normal, you know, a position we're not normally in. All right, from here, bend both knees, feet flat on your mat. We're gonna get into some bridge walking. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tuck our butt underneath, drawing our belly button towards our spine. We're gonna press through the heels, we're pressing through the heels, lifting the pelvis up into the air. And then you're gonna maintain this position Press into one heel as you lift one other leg off, the other leg off the ground. Nice and slow, lower it down. Okay, get yourself into good position first and then do your movement. We wanna focus on quality over quantity. Okay, so once you're moving well, then you can start to move more. But in the very beginning, I want you to move nice and slow and really enjoy the sensations of movement as you go. Okay, so you can kind of dorsiflex the foot and spread the toes wide and just play, play around with little variations of the movement as you go. You know, you could sit here and do some bridge marching with whatever speed you like, and that's okay as well. Remember, this is your session, this is your movement practice, so you can tweak these movements to work for you. And my job is to give you ideas of how you can expand the benefit of our movement practice together. That's what my job is. So feel free to take whatever you like, discard the rest, and add what's uniquely yours. You can thank Bruce Lee for that whole idea. Let's leave that anyway. Come along with me. Nice and easy, nice and calm. Okay, so from here, we're going to get into some rocking. So our feet are going to stay planted on the ground for the moment. And what we're going to do is we're going to tuck our butt underneath, drawing our belly button towards our spine first. 
Then lift the feet up off the ground. Your knees are together and you're gonna tuck your chin towards your chest and just do some gentle rocking forward and back. So the ground is massaging the back muscles and you're making sure that the movement is smooth and slow so that you're not smacking your head on the ground as you roll back. Now, if you like, you can come up to a seated position and then reach in between the legs. You can round through the back, send a nice gentle wave there, and then tuck that butt underneath, come right back into your rocking. So again, <clears throat> as you're doing your movements this morning, mix it up. Perhaps you wanna, wanna change your angle or your body position. <clears throat> and then again, if you wanna come to seated and then reach, reach, use whatever variation you like. Reach, reach, reach. Nice and easy. This is a fantastic abdominal exercise that's super functional. In fact, I can remember my grandma at 89 years old. This is how she would get off the couch. She'd get her legs up and then whoa, she'd get herself up. Might be the only exercise she ever did. In any case, let's go back to our rolling. This time we're going to lead with the foot. So we're gonna take one foot up into the air. You're gonna reach through each one of the toes and just bring the leg across the body. You can touch the ground and then come right back out of it and switch sides. So again, the emphasis is reaching through the fascial web or the, through the connective tissue and then reaching it through your environment and just exploring sensations. Remember, this should feel good. If at any moment it feels like, huh, feels like you're holding your breath, that's a sign that you really want to let go. And this is a safe movement, relatively speaking, so you shouldn't be too concerned about, you know, oh, letting go of that tension. Letting go of tension should be a, a ritualistic aspect um, to your movement practice. Okay, so again, just reaching up into the air, reaching through the toes. You can rotate through the leg bone, point the toes, bring the toes towards the nose, maybe emphasize reaching through the heel. Ah, there's so many variations. Guys, this, is, this is just an exploratory movement session where we're gonna increase the speed, increase the intensity as we go and enjoy ourselves as we go too, right? There's this element of play and play lives between challenge and comfort. Okay. So from there, we're going back into our bridges. So bend both knees, feet flat on your mat. We're gonna tuck our butt underneath, drawing our belly button towards the spine. Press yourself into a nice strong bridge. From here, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to Flex the hip, straighten the knee. So switch, flex the hip, straighten the knee. Now another option that we have for this one is to simply straighten the knee from the bridge position. So from this nice, strong, stable bridge position, I can just straighten my knee. The quadricep muscles should be contracting. That's what this movement is for specifically is to get a nice gentle contraction of the quadricep muscle, the muscles. Nice and strong. You can add that emphasis of reach with this movement as well, you know, reaching through the toes, adding some rotations of the femur bone or of the leg bone. Nice and strong, make sure you're breathing deeply and expansively as you go. Mix up the movement to work for you. Okay, nice and strong. 
press your hands into the ground if you like to add to the support of the movement. Or you could take the backs of your hands and press them into the ground. And that will tend to help you to contract those posterior shoulder muscles that can overstretch when we work at a desk all day, if you happen to do that. Okay, so we're gonna go back into our rocking, but this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up to our sit bones and balance just for one breath cycle. And then we're gonna go right back down onto the ground into our rocking. So from rocking, I'm gonna come up onto my sit bones and I'm gonna balance. You can see that my chin is um, parallel with the ground. And I'm taking one full breath cycle here and then I'm gonna roll myself back down onto the ground. I'm gonna come up, see if I can get more of my body in the picture here. And then right back down. And you can add some gentle rocking as you transition from one rep to the next. Come up, balance, and then lower yourself down. Now, when you come up to that balance point, you want to see if you can't imagine squeezing your abdomen to your thigh. And if you need to use your hands to support that process, that's cool. You can even add more of a, a V-sit balancing position here, whichever one you like. So from rocking to balance. And right back down. Okay, so our last rolling set, what we're gonna do is, and we've, we've ended our sessions with this one before, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna reach through the arms and legs and you're gonna end up in a fetal position on your side. So I'm gonna reach up and out with my arms and legs, roll to my side and front. Reach through the arms and legs and crunch. If you wanna keep the arms and legs off the ground as you transition, that's fantastic. If you want to use the ground to help support your legs or your arms or both, that's fine. Breathe deeply and expansively as you go. And this is a fantastic exercise for all of the abdominal muscles. So internal, external oblique, rectus abdominis, transverse abdominis, quadratus lumborum. Everything gets lit up in the abdominal area with this movement. This is a movement that I personally use for dealing with issues um, or people that have back, back issues or a history of back pain. This is fantastic for recruiting those muscles that help to stabilize the spine. You're reaching out through your environment and then crunching it up. Reach, crunch, reach, and crunch, reach, and crunch. Nice and easy. Okay, so our last um, set of bridges, we're gonna do something called a side escape. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press up into our bridge you're gonna take one foot off of the ground and with the foot that's still on the ground, you're gonna press yourself back. So I'm pressing my hips back and then coming right back up into my bridge. So I'm gonna do that several times so you can see what that looks like from different angles. But all I'm doing is, is I'm pressing my hips back to escape and then coming right back into my bridge position. So one foot comes off the ground, it doesn't matter at what height the foot is or the leg. And all I'm doing is I'm pressing back my hips. So it's like a way to escape, to get out of the way. So in the unlikely event, you end up on your back and you want to escape, you press 
your hips back. Go from that bridge. My arms are together. I'm in a nice position where I can roll. I can press myself up. I can get away. Okay? So again, bridge, press back. Bridge, press back. Bridge, press back. So you're using a speed that works for you. It's not about wrong, it's about escape. <laughs> Go from your bridge, escape. Bridge, escape. Escape. Nice and easy. Okay, so our last rocking, all we're gonna do this time, we're gonna do some general rocking, and we're just gonna come up to our side bend sit position. So again, before you take your feet off of the ground, draw your belly button towards your spine. Tuck your butt underneath. Then, once the abdominal muscles are active, specifically the transverse abdominis, now you can take those feet off the ground and start your rock. And when you come up to your upright seated position, one leg's in the front, bent, and one leg is bent to the back. Side bent sit. From here, slowly make your way back to your backside and then switch sides. So you rock back, come up to this position. Remember, every time you come up, whether you practice martial arts or not, the idea um, that we want to really emphasize is, is a sense of readiness. So when I come up into my side bend sit, my elbows are in close my, to my body, my hands are positioned somewhere to protect my face or to get me up into a standing position. So you guys can add whatever you like to this movement, but it's yours. You can make it as easy or as difficult as you want. So we're just rocking on our back and coming up into this beautiful side bend set position. It's like a, like a T-Rex position, but totally ready to go. The elbows are protecting the ribs, the hands are ready to protect the face, okay? All right, so from here, we're gonna do some side bend sit hip swivels. So we're already in side bend sit. You can post your arms behind you. Remember to keep the shoulders down, the spine is long, and you're just going to switch your knees from one side to the other. Okay, so go at a speed that works for you. I'm gonna use a slower speed to start. I'm gonna use my breath work to add an element of relaxation, especially in areas where you might feel a little bit of a hitch or a little bit of discomfort. Like let's say for example, as you switch, you feel a little bit wonky or a little bit stuck in the center. You're gonna take your knees from side to side and then when you're ready, get to that full end position. Okay, so you can take the arms out of it if you like, and now it becomes more of an abdominal exercise. So I just lift my elbows up enough for my knees to clear underneath, and then I bring them right back in. Okay, nice and slow, nice and strong. Practice looking around, rotating through the cervical spine, especially in that end position. Okay, so our next movement is going to be to get up from this side bend set position. So all you're gonna do is, you're gonna take your arms over to, over past that front leg. I'm gonna lift my body off the ground Walk my hands back, come to standing. Walk it out. As I walk it out, I want my toes to be spread wide. So I'm really feeling the ground below me. From here, I'm going to lower myself back to the ground. Hands come back to the ground. And I'm going to slowly lower myself back into side bend sit. Okay? Now, if I did this side the first time, 
I'm going to swivel my knees to the other side and now get up from that position. Walk it out. Lower myself down slowly with control. Get myself back into side bend, sit. Switch it up. Now again, let's say this morning you're thinking, I want to go a little bit more intense. That's fine. But just remember, especially as you press your hands into the ground, distribute the weight of the, of the body through the whole hand, not just in the wrist. So as I place my hands on the ground, this is why emphasizing quality over quantity is very important in the beginning, so that you're teaching your body the way you want it to move first, and then adding levels of intensity. Walk it out. Remember, guys, if you're, feeling, if you're feeling any discomfort in your body this morning, I want you to thank your body for showing you that something needs a little bit more attention, a little bit more support. It needs encouragement, not fear. Okay, now like, oh, what's that? No, the body's wired to tell us when something's not right, so we need to be able to honor that. Okay, so from here, we're going to get onto our hands and knees into a tabletop position for some spinal articulations. So on your hands and knees, please, we're gonna start with cat and cow flexion and extension, but this is gonna be a dynamic cat and cow where we're gonna shift our body weight forward and back. And the emphasis of this movement is to open up and to mine for sensations through the whole spine. So as I drop my sternum towards the ground, I can drop my hips back over my heels. I can send a wave of movement through my spine as I bring my body weight forward, forward and back. I can add some lateral flexion, looking back towards my feet. But remember the idea is to let go of tension. Sometimes what we'll do is we really focus on bringing some tension through the body. And tension usually isn't the problem with human beings. It's, it's letting go that becomes the problem. So the idea with this movement is move your spine and let go of unnecessary tension. You drop yourself into a full cobra. You lift those knees up off the ground, distributing that extension evenly throughout the whole spine. Nice and relaxed and add any variations you like to make this movement work for you. Okay, so from here, let's go back into our side bend sit. So I'm just gonna bring one leg forward and my back leg's already where it needs to be. So this time we're gonna swivel our knees from side to side and now we're just gonna add a reach. So when you reach, make sure that you're keeping a nice neutral spine and you're hinging at the hips. You should feel a glorious stretch on the posterior hip of that front leg. Okay, now if you want this to be a little bit more intense, contract your abdominal muscles, hinge forward at the hips, and then bring both arms out at the same time. Make it work for you. Make it as intense or as easy as you like. You can reach towards the ceiling. You can pivot your or swivel your knees to the other side, keeping your arms up, and then just move forward. If you have something in your environment, like maybe a remote or a clock or a watch or a pillow, you can reach for it. Maybe put it somewhere else. Perhaps you throw it up into the air, catch it, make it more playful. Choice is yours. Make it work for you. Nice and strong. Breathe deeply and expansively as you go. See how much you can expand everything that's in the torso of your body. Take in that energy of breath. 
can absorb it and imagine absorbing that energy with that with that inhalation. All right, so let's go back into our tabletop position. And now we're gonna do some get ups from this position. So perhaps we're on the ground, we're looking for something, or maybe we're weeding in our garden. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna lift your knees up off the ground. You're sitting your hips back while you walk your hands back. And then from this position, I'm gonna drop my hips back, press through the heels, come to standing, walk it out. Okay, now I'm gonna lower myself back down. So I'm gonna hinge at the, at the hips, drop my weight back, lower my hands down with control, walk my hands out. So now I'm back in tabletop position. So your knees can be separate, they could be close, you could do a combination of the two. Come to standing, walk it out. So some of these movements are easier than others. Um, this one for me is really easy, so it, it feels like a recovery type movement, and I think that those are important, um, especially because we, we do tend to hold excessive tension in the body um, as a culture. So we want to get into the habit of making sure our movement practice involves letting go of unnecessary tension and dispersing that type of movement throughout an intense movement practice, okay? All right, so from here, we're gonna stay in this foot hand or this knee hand position, and we're gonna do a contralateral reach. So you're gonna lift up opposite arm, opposite leg, and just like when we were reaching in the beginning, I want you to reach through each one of the fingers and also through the toes, reaching as far as you can while maintaining the nice contraction within the abdominal muscles. So your belly button's being drawn towards the spine while you move. Your toes are tucked under. You're ready to lift those knees up. At any moment, you can pop up. And you're just reaching. But while I'm in my reach, I want to breathe. So even though my abdominal muscles are contracted, there's still movement in my lower ribs, front, sides, and back as I use those nice diaphragmatic breaths. So I'm lifting opposite arm, opposite leg. If you want this movement to be more intense, just take the knees off the ground. Remember to press through all parts of your hand to feel the connection of the ground, even under your toes. You can take your hands and knees or feet, whatever balance, whatever part of your body you're using to balance on, you can mix it up as much as you like. Breathe deeply and expansively as you go. Okay, let's bring one leg in front into our side bend sit position. And for this light, last side bend sit uh, variation, we're going to do our kick out. So we're going to pick up that back leg, bring it all the way to the front. The abdominal muscles are contracting strong. We switch legs and now bring this other leg to the back and then set it down nice and gentle. Remember the arms are in close by the body. Hands can be up a little bit towards the face. You want to feel that nice relationship between the shoulders or the arms and the body. You also want to explore the sensations of powerful diaphragmatic breathing, even though your abdominal muscles are contracting. Remember to lengthen by pressing through the crown of the head, keeping the ribs down in front while you do that so the chin will be slightly tucked. Bring that leg up, bring it forward, switch. Nice and easy. You can go as fast as you like. You can even practice perhaps 
kicking the leg forward. So it becomes a little bit more like a spin on the caboose there. Nice and easy. All right. So now that we've got these legs warmed up a little bit, we're going to move into a full squat position. So I want you to uh, get yourselves into a nice full squat. So you're on the flat foot. Now, if you can't get into this position for any reason, perhaps it's more comfortable to go up onto the balls of the feet. That's an option for you. And all we're going to do from this position is we're going to place our palms on the ground and we're going to press our hips back and imagine extending the length between the tip of the tailbone and the top of the head and then with a neutral spine press yourself to standing. Lower yourself right back down. So this is a full squat. Now if you don't want to use your hands that's totally cool. You can feel free to bring the shins perpendicular to the ground as you, as you drop your weight back through your hips. And then again, keeping that neutral spine, press into standing. Perhaps walk it out, shake it out, staying nice and relaxed. And then when you're ready, keeping that neutral spine, drawing the belly button towards the spine, drop those hips back, get into a nice full deep squat. Use whatever you need to make this movement work for you. Make sure the spine stays relaxed, but the abdominal muscles are active. Walk it up. Nice and easy. Drop it back. And lower down. Okay, if you want to spend a few moments in any one of these positions, feel free. I like to spend a little time in the full squat. This is a very important resting position to be able to get into. Okay, so from here, we're going to get back into our foot hand crawl position. So lower the knees to the ground if you need to. And now we're just going to add a little bit of contralateral crawling. What that means is I move my opposite arm, opposite leg. Now, if I want to take my knees off the ground, I can do that. If I want to add another layer to this movement, I'm going to transition into an inverted crawl position and do a little bit of crawling from here. Okay, transition. Nice and easy. Nice and strong, really exploring different positions. And again, it's this idea of contralateral movement. So, and contralateral support. So many different variations that we can find with this movement pattern. Okay. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and come to standing. So I want you to come to a nice standing position. And we're gonna start with some step out lunges, imagining we're stepping under an obstacle. So with your feet together, you're going to bring all your weight into one side. I'm going to imagine there's something I need to get underneath. So I'm going to step under the obstacle, bring my body weight over to that new um, support, and then bring the other leg up, come to standing, walk it out. Okay? So again, I got an obstacle. I'm going to squat down. I'm going to spread the toes wide of what will be my supporting leg. I'm going to step out to the side. I'm going to start to bring my weight onto this new base of support, but still maintaining some awareness into that original base of support. 
And when I'm ready, with control, I'm going to get that other leg back and need the other one. Stand up, lock it on. When you're ready, switch sides. Squat, step, and stand up. Nice and slow or nice and fast, but each movement should be quality. You can step backwards if you like and pivot on the heels or the ball of the foot. So many different variations of the step out lunge. Okay, one more time. Nice and easy. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna move into some thrust kicks. You never know when you're gonna need to use your legs to assist you in this life. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into a front stance, one foot in front of the other. You're gonna take your back leg up by flexing the hip and the knee, and you're going to press through the heel, bring the leg back up, bring it behind, switch side. So again, one leg is in front, one leg is in back. I'm gonna put all my weight into that front leg, hinging forward at the waist, and then bringing the leg up through flexion of the hip, flexion of the knee, press through the heel, and then bring the leg back, switch sides. Okay, so again, I've got my leg in the back, moving it up, boom. And each set that I do, or each rep that I do, I can start to increase the speed just a little bit. I wanna have that feeling of balance in that supporting leg, and I also wanna feel the connectivity in my body and the safety of this movement so that I don't throw myself up into the air. This is a helpful practice for, you know, those winter months when we might step on some black ice and, you know, have one of those slipping dynamics. Or perhaps we need to use our foot to open up a, rust, a rusty lock. I don't know. Whatever, whatever you might need to use it for. Um, at the very least, this is a very good technique for opening up and strengthening tissues. So stretching and strengthening all at the same time. Creating balance and control. Okay. So from here, we're gonna move into some balance. So we're gonna take all of our weight into one leg. You're gonna take the opposite hand of your supporting leg and put it on your head. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach for my foot and touch it in front, touch it behind, reach out to the side, and reach to the front. Okay, and then I'll switch sides. So I have one supporting leg. I'm gonna reach my foot in the front, reach forward and back, reach out to the side, really reaching through the toes and through the fingers, and then reach forward, switch sides. You might be asking yourself, self, why do I have my hand? Why do I have my hand on my head? This is a technique to help recalibrate cranial nerves. So without too much time to get into explanations, just know that it's a very good thing for your nervous system. Reach and reach. Okay, switch sides. Take your time. Touch, touch, reach, reach. Remember, the toes of the supporting leg should be spread wide. And each one of these movements should be done very, very slow. Touch, touch, here, and here. Okay. And balance as I fall all over the place. Okay, so from here, we're gonna get back to our step out lunges. This time what we're gonna do is we're gonna step behind. So your feet are relatively close together. I'm gonna step behind into a lunge. I'm on the balls of my feet and my back foot. And I'm just gonna gently rotate through my torso and reach behind. Okay, come out of it, 
bend forward at the hips, come back to my starting position, switch side. So again, I reach back with my back foot or one of my feet, and then I rotate through my spine and reach. And then bring it right back, hinge at the hips, come to stand. Switch side. So step back, reach, bring it out, hinge. And what this hinge does, oh, my voice is back. What this hinge does is it really helps to strengthen the glute. So as I reach back with that foot, this glute, this glute of this front leg is active. And then I reach back and then come right back out of it. Okay, so step, reach, hinge, come up, step, reach, hinge. Come out, step, reach, hinge, come out. One more time, other side, step out, reach, hinge, come out. Okay, so we're going to go back to our thrust kicks. This time we're doing them to the side, so we're going to step behind. So have my feet roughly parallel. I'm going to step behind, I'm going to lift up the front leg, and I'm going to press through the heel, and then bring this leg right back and come to my starting position. So all it is, is step behind, bring up the front leg, thrust, bring it back, set it down, step behind, Bring up that front leg, thrust, bring it back, come to starting position. Okay, so again, your arms to be in close to the body. Step behind, thrust, and remember to always make variations of these movements to make sure it works for you. If you want to go a little bit higher with your thrust, feel free. I can go as high as I like, as high as what's comfortable for my body. Okay. Whatever position works best for you. This is a balancing technique as well to some extent. So you want to make sure that while you're performing this movement, you're breathing deeply and expansively. Pressing through the heel, staying in the position as long as you like, and then coming right back out of it. Okay, so we're going to move into some more strict balance positions. So again, we're going to put all of our weight into one leg. You're going to lift the leg up in front, so you're flexing the hip, flexing the knee. You're going to reach out in front with your toes. Then we're going to bring the leg to the side. Now we're going to leave, bring the leg to the back. Again, if the arms are in close to the body, this is good. If you want to bring the arms out in front, that's fine. But if you want to keep the arms in the center, this is a good position. The emphasis is balance, not necessarily strengthening. So it's not as necessary that you bring your arms out in front. So I reach through my toes. Bring my arm out, or my arm, my leg, out to the side. I'm balancing and focusing on balance with that supporting leg. And then I'm navigating and exploring different vectors and angles and positions of motion while I balance. Switch side. So bring the leg out. Side to the back, and then one more time the other side. Reach, reach. Remember to spread the toes wide of that supporting leg, 
and then come out of that nice and slow. Okay, so one last set of our thrust kicks. We can do that in a little bit of a different order. Oh no, we're good. Okay, so our last set of lunges is going to be a deep lateral lunge. So you're gonna take your feet about two to three times shoulder width apart. And all we're gonna do it to start is just shift our weight from side to side, bending each one of the knees. And then, so you can have your hands on your thighs, you can have them on the knees and massage into the knees as you go. I always like to add a little bit of massage because what that does is it stimulates the nerves and the mechanoreceptors in your, in your connective tissue and it helps to make the movement more productive. And then ultimately we're going to lower ourselves down into this lateral lunge position. So you've got so many options here. I can take that straightened leg foot and take it to the ball. I can stay on the full foot. I can either scrape my hands on the ground or I can keep my hands in another position. Reach. Just exploring some nice movements here. This should feel awesome, especially because of all the work that we just did to get those um, muscles activated, the tissues activated, and the blood moving. Nice and strong. You can switch it to more of a lunge position. Just make sure that these big leg muscles are active. Okay. So we have one more set of balance. And then we're going to get into our recovery. So from here, all we're going to do is we're going to peel with our feet shoulder width apart. You're going to peel one foot off of the ground and bring it behind you so that the toes are, are touching the ground. You'll notice there's a straight line between my foot and the top of my head. Now from here, I'm just going to hinge and counterbalance my upper body with my back leg. I want to make sure that my hips, if I take my hands on the front of my hips, my hips should be pointed forward, not open to the side. This is an option, but this isn't where I am right now. For here, I'm just positioning my pelvis forward. And then I'm going to come out of that slowly. Switch sides. So again, heel one foot off the ground. Bring that leg behind you while you simultaneously hinge at the hips. You go as far as you can go. Now with this particular movement, if you want to bring the arms towards the front, you can. If that's a little bit too difficult, you can bring them out to the side. And then of course we have the other option of prayer position in front of your chest. Come out of that nice and slow and strong. Okay, so sides, one more time. Bring it back. Just feeling the sensation of balance. Come out of that nice and slow. Okay, guys. So let's go ahead and end our session with a little bit of massage. So what you're going to do is you're going to do a forward fold, and we're just going to massage starting at the feet. You're just going to press into your feet, pressing in between the toes, massage the feet themselves, take your hands to the back side of your Achilles tendon, massage on the back side of your legs. Nice gentle compressions all the way through. You can play around with adding some movement into these compressions. You can stroke up through and, and glide up through the central portion here. And this is really productive, especially for the circulation of blood and limb. And stroking down and gliding up and through. So this is like an active stretch for the hamstring. And going down, opening and separating the sit bones. 
coming up, coming down, coming up, coming down. Okay, from here, in my forward fold position, I'm just gonna rope, walk my hands over to one side, and then walk over to the other side. Now, while you're doing this, this is a cool down, so we should start focusing on really expanding those breaths, especially the exhalation. Okay, let's go ahead and come down onto our mat, please. So onto your sit bones, we're gonna cross our legs in front of our body. We're gonna pull on our knees to create length through the spine without flaring those ribs. So I want you to tuck the chin slightly, press through the crown of the head, and all we're gonna do is we're gonna take in a breath and we're gonna drop one ear to one shoulder. And you can rotate through the neck and just explore different sensations of stretch. I can also add a massage element to this technique. So I'm just gently compressing into the muscles on the side of my neck. I can look up towards the ceiling, pressing down on the clavicle, just relaxing all the muscles through the side of the neck. Okay, let's go ahead and switch sides. So again, inhale, exhale. As you exhale, lower your ear to your shoulder. Add rotation, add compression. Now, perhaps you have a history of tension headaches. This isn't about how far you can stretch. This is really about letting go and releasing tension. Nice and easy. Your breath is deep and expansive. And you're adding whatever variations you like to explore sensations in your body. Okay? From here, we're going to take one arm above the head and we're going to stretch through the lateral rib cage and we're going to come right back out of it and switch sides. So imagine you have a sphere, an energetic sphere or bubble around you, and you want to see how far you can press that bubble by reaching as far as you can. Reach, switch sides. Reach, switch sides. Two more times. There's one. And here's two. Okay. From here, let's go ahead and we're going to hinge forward at the waist. We're going to bring our hands towards the front. And just allow your back to round in the back. So you can relax through the spine. Let the tension in your neck and shoulders relax. You can take your palms up off the ground and add some gentle undulations of movement through the thoracic spine, through the mid back. Feeling the openness of the scapula on the rib cage. The openness of the neck and shoulders. Very nice. From here, come back to this position. What we're going to do is we're going to get into a V sit. From this V sit position, I want you to draw your toes towards your nose and contract those quadricep muscles. Okay, so if you're really flexible, unlike myself, you can feel free to bring the hands in front and even hinge forward at the hips. For me, this is the best option. And I can even take my butt off the ground and just get some nice gentle opening of the posterior leg. Okay. From here, I'm going to bend my knees and I'm going to move my hips through internal and external rotation just by dropping my knees from side to side. 
So I inhale in the center, I exhale as I lower to the other side. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Nice and easy. All right. From here, I'm going to go ahead and lower myself down onto my mat, flat on my back. I'm going to take my palms and just use the weight of my hands, and I'm going to just rock my hips from side to side. I can either do it by using my hands, or I can do a combination of just moving them with my own leg muscles, contracting each one of the glute muscles independently. And I'm just going to start to massage into the muscles um, in my what do you call this, lateral abdominal area. So as this is the ascending and the descending colon, so I'm massaging into the front and back side simultaneously. Letting go of tension and just relaxing as you go. It should feel really good. This is really good for the kidneys. This is good for your colon. Massaging, so you, my fingers are massaging all the way into the back here. And I'm breathing as I go, nice and relaxed. Okay, so from here, let's go ahead, palms towards the ceiling. We're just gonna do three nice diaphragmatic breaths on your own speed. So you're just breathing and relaxing, extending the exhalation, Bringing into mind something that you're thankful for this morning. Taking your attention into the ability that your body has to keep you healthy and strong. Imagine all the different tissues of your body, the different organs, the different systems. Imagine them healthy and strong. Imagine all the valves that are coming from and moving to your heart are, are beautiful and clear and clean. Imagine your lungs are healthy and, and, and able to do their job wonderfully. Imagine that your immune system is full of Green Beret, Navy SEAL caliber cells that can just take care of business like nobody, like no, like, like nobody else. Keeping your body safe, clean, and clear at all times. Take one more breath with me, please. You can feel free to stay in this position if you like. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. You can bend one knee at a time, foot flat on the mat. You rock yourself to an upright seated position unless you feel the need to kind of chill where you are. Okay, guys, how we doing? Oh, well, actually, if I told you to stay there a little bit longer, you can still do that. <laughs> I hope that you guys enjoyed yourselves today. I'm really thankful you were here. Again, I'm so sorry that class started a little late today. Um, uh, but please um, have a wonderful, wonderful day today. Smile a lot. Breathe deeply and expansively. And... Um, I just look forward to seeing you guys next Thursday, same time, same channel. Um, you're welcome. Thank you for this time. Yeah, thank you, Cindy. I really appreciate it. Um, this this work is, is is a result of my life's work, really, um, for staying healthy and strong and vibrant. And, and so I appreciate you guys and your willingness to share with me today. And um, again, just have a wonderful, wonderful day. And I'll, I'll look forward to seeing you guys same time, same channel.